this is uh, case 24 and we've uh, kind of a shave and we can tell that it looks kind of like skin but it's very pale very pale washed out white clear looking keratinocytes that's because they're filled with glycogen and the glycogen dissolved during processing so that plus the lack of a stratum corneum and lack of a granular layer tells us we're in squamous mucosa and in this case it's from the uh, oral mucosa and down here in the uh, the submucosa I, I always want to say dermis or epidermis because i'm so used to looking at skin but i have to remember to say mucosal epithelium and submucosa or subepithelial connective tissue whichever ever name you like uh, when i'm in the mouth i've got to remember to use those terms but if you said epidermis and dermis it's it's equivalent right but not technically accurate so here we see pigment so at first glance it looks like brown pigment kind of spindly looking you might think maybe this is a blue nevus in a mucosal site but going closer they actually don't have quite the same spindled cells as a blue nevus blue nevus usually has a denser uh, sclerotic collagen in the background and here we have very loose kind of edematous uh, spread apart fine collagen and then also the material here is kind of it's hard to appreciate but it's kind of a more uh, of a, a speckled pattern to it and uh, often when you see it on light microscope uh, some of the little specks will look almost more black but it can range between black and brown um, and it's deposited actually not instead of it being in spindle cells it's depositing on little wispy elastic fibers and maybe some collagen fibers too and some of it's being taken up by macrophages histiocytes in the background see here it looks almost more black and uh, rather than brown so this is uh, when we see little particles that look black and are fine and are de depositing on um, uh, fibers you can think about metal deposition you can also think about drug deposits if you're in the skin and, and depending on the clinical situation but here this was probably a little gray gray to blue to black papule on the the gum line or the labial uh, i'm sorry the uh, the uh, mucosa uh, of the uh, the uh, gums near the teeth and so this is an amalgam tattoo and this is from probably in an older patient i think nowadays um, amalgam which is like a silver based composite metal used for fillings dental fillings uh, in the process of applying that i guess during some of the drilling or polishing i'm not a dentist i don't know so please forgive me a dental and oral pathology colleagues if i'm explaining it wrong but sometimes little bits of the amalgam would get kind of spun out by the high speed drill or polishing uh, tools and get embedded into the mucosa uh, adjacent to the tooth uh, and so that would leave a little pigmented area. And so sometimes that gets removed later if someone sees it just to make sure it's that, not a melanocytic lesion. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, the, um, because you can get both nevi and melanoma in the oral mucosa. So, so if there's any doubt clinically, sometimes that would be, uh, that would be a, an easy way to sort out what's going on here. Uh, my understanding is that um, metal amalgam is not used much or as often anymore because there are composite materials and ceramics and other stuff that are used that are not metal based and so i feel like we don't see these uh, very often in 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 uh, modern times unless a patient's older and has a metal uh, dental filling so that's an amalgam tattoo and of course the clinical information and the anatomic site is really important here uh, to recognize this